Bailey. My name is Meredith Kelly. I'm an associate professor in the Department of Earth Sciences at Dartmouth College. And my research focuses on understanding past climate changes by using glaciers. Um, so glaciers are small masses of ice that exist around the world um, today and in the past. And what you probably know about today is that glaciers around the world are melting and shrinking rapidly due to global warming. And what this is really neat in a way because what this tells us is that glaciers are really sensitive to changes in temperature. And therefore, because of that, I can use the past changes in glaciers or the past extents of glaciers to reconstruct past temperatures in times before humans had thermometers out measuring temperature. The other really neat thing about glaciers is that they exist around the world. They exist from the tropics to the poles. Um, and therefore, we can get a picture of what temperature looked like around the whole planet. I'm also interested in understanding ice sheets and how ice sheets interacted with the climate. Um, and with this research as a whole, what I'd like to do is to improve our understanding of how climate changed in the past and how the mechanisms of climate change work um, with the hope that we can improve our predictions of future climate change. A little bit about me, um, I've been at Dartmouth for over 11 years. Um, I have um, lived all over the place. I grew up in Cleveland, Ohio, and I'm a huge Le LeBron James fan. Um, I went to school in Boston and it, in Maine and in Switzerland. Um, I Most recently, before I moved to Dartmouth, I lived in New York City and worked at an Earth Observatory with more than 300 students, uh, sorry, 300 uh, other research scientists and students who worked there too. And um, I have a wonderful family. I have three kids. Uh, I have a five-year-old daughter and twin boys who are two. So I have my hands full at home. And um, I have a dog, Bailey, who's gonna be joining us for the field trip today. See her here. And um, we enjoy being outside. We enjoy hiking and swimming in the summertime and skiing in the winter. Um, I have a wonderful husband who helps out with everything and if we get some time on our own we like to do the crossword puzzle, we love cooking, all that kind of good stuff. Um, one thing about my work that I really love is that it's enabled me to travel. Um, so I've been able to study ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica, uh, but I've also been able to travel to the um, other places in the world because I have been interested in studying tropical glaciers. Um, so I've worked in South America and Peru and Bolivia. I've also worked in Africa and Uganda um, where there actually are active glaciers today. Um, but one of the most amazing things and why I feel most fortunate to be at Dartmouth is that this environment right here is um, evidenced and uh, formed by glaciers, by a large ice sheet that was here at the end of the last ice age. And um, this evidence for this is what I'd like to share with you today. Okay, we're currently standing at the edge of Occam Pond. Occam Pond is a small pond located at, on the north side of the Dartmouth College campus in Hanover, New Hampshire. And it's thought that this pond formed at the end of the last ice age. So the last ice age was a prolonged cold period in Earth's history when large ice sheets existed around the world. And one of the largest ice sheets was known as the Laurentide Ice Sheet, and it covered most of northern North America. At the end of the last ice age, climate started to warm, and this ice sheet, the Laurentide, retreated northward or melted and, and lost mass, um, exposing land first in the south and then in the north. And Hanover, New Hampshire, was exposed or became ice free about 14,000 years ago. So, how do we know this information about the last ice age and ice sheets and how they retreated? Well, this is really an amazing question to ask. And in fact, it's information that's right below our feet. It's preserved in the landforms and the sediments that make up the landforms. And by interpreting these landforms and sediments, we can get information about the past that then we hope we'll be able to provide information about how ice sheets today may respond to climate change. So the question 
um, that we're going to ask today is what do observations and measurements of the landscape around us tell us about past environments? <laughs> 